for being here today. We're Thanks here at Jim's Clam Shack. I mean, they can't get much better than this. The sailboat's coming in, the water, yep. it's a beautiful view. Um, so how's it going? <laughs> Three games left of the regular season. How are you feeling? Um, how are you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Um, the team's really swinging it right now, and it's just been an awesome summer. Great people, great competition, and I'm excited to finish strong. The boys are in a really good spot, and it's just exciting. I love to start these interviews with asking, who is Travis? Besides baseball, besides the sport, who is Travis Bazana? Um, family, friendly, um, just caring and loving, and obsessed with making himself better in all aspects of his life and um, trying to be good to the people around him. I don't know, I'm really focused on just bettering myself and the way I can be around other people. So I don't know, I think that's what comes to my head for us. So talk to me a little bit about your start with baseball. What are some of your earliest memories of picking up a bat or a baseball? Yeah. The first thing that comes to mind in terms of early memories was two, three years old at the, at the local field um, with the Karingai Steelers. My older brothers were playing uh, t-ball and like junior, junior baseball and I just remember like hanging out at the field, picking up a bat and a ball, getting in my brother's way, having his friends tell me to go away. Like, um, just swinging, asking people to throw to me, probably two, three years old, and I like I have flashbacks to that kind of age. Um, and I don't know if it's because I've seen it on video, like me hanging at the field at that age, or I really have that memory, I'm not really sure. But um, just as early as that, I was in love with the game, I think. You mentioned that family is a big part of you. Um, how much of an, what is the impact of your family with baseball and, you know, growing up in Australia, looking up to your older brothers? You yeah. have, you're the youngest. Yeah. Um, so um, talk to me a little bit about that relationship with your brothers and your family. Yeah, um, I'm a little bit younger than my brothers and they played and, um, but they also did a lot of other things. Um, probably not as into baseball as me, but I think I just, learned through their experiences and they they showed me how to be the best version of myself and they were great at different things and took took different paths had different social groups and like i kind of got to see see the ropes a little bit um and they've just taught me taught me an extreme amount and then my parents like just supported me throughout throughout everything and um kind of let me make the decisions I wanted to make and take the opportunities I wanted to take. They just supported it however I, I wanted to do it and, and trusted in my ability to learn from the bad decisions and um, grow on the good ones. So yeah, um, family's been incredible to me and I've got a lot to give back to them. I'm sure having two older brothers, there's a lot of competition growing up. Mm -hmm. Was there some little sibling rivalries there, just pushing each other to always get better? Yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> used to battle out with um, Hayden, my brother, who's closest in age to me, mm -hmm. um, in like sport and, and running, and then sometimes video games. But um, yeah, there was definitely some friendly battles, but um, it was all love. Mm -hmm. Growing up in Sydney, Australia, playing baseball, did you play other sports on top of baseball too? Or was it always baseball? Yeah, I, I played a bunch of sports. Um, growing up, most of my best friends like played sports because I was kind of a sporty kid, um, but they weren't playing baseball. Mm. And so it was often like rugby at the park or kick around a soccer ball at the soccer field or cricket in the backyard or at the park. like. I was playing a whole bunch of sports that are kind of more common to Australia in the sort of hobby, like free time, joking around. And then like when it was go time to practice or um, focus on something, it was always baseball because I loved that the most. But yeah, I played a bunch of sports and and just loved it. I don't know, that, that's kind of what I always, always, wanted been an athlete. To, always wanted to do, yeah. Um, and When did you realize that baseball was the sport? I don't know if there was ever a realization like time. I feel like from 
a super young age, it, it was like my best sport mm -hmm. and the sport that I like cared about the most and was just kind of obsessed over. So I don't think there was ever a period where it was like, this is the sport. It sort of always was, um, but I, but I just loved playing it, like all kinds of sports. So I don't know, I think it was as young as three to five years old, I like, I felt that way about baseball, mm -hmm. so. Um, being from Australia, it's uncommon that there's baseball talent that come out of Australia. Who were some people that you looked up to as a kid in the baseball world, or even just in the sports world in general? Who yeah. was someone that you looked up to as a role model or a mentor? So. In the Australian baseball world, like the people that come to mind, Grant Balfour, um, he was a unbelievable like energy pitcher for the Athletics and the Rays for the most part of his career, um, and kind of brought a lot of attention to Australian baseball just the way he he went about it, and he was just an unbelievable pitcher. So I loved his energy, and I try to kind of match some of that, yeah. um, even though I'm not a pitcher, and then. Trent Olchin was a mentor of mine, still is to this day. He played in the major leagues, just an athletic left-handed hitting outfielder and um, just taught me like to never set limits on myself and and really always like push for crazy goals, even, even if they sound crazy to people and um, allowed me to believe in myself. And then on the American baseball side of things, um, I definitely like looked up to Bryce Harper when he first got to the league. Um, again, just a spark plug, good energy. Um, again, some some people have bad opinions of Bryce Harper, but he he was definitely someone I looked up to. When did you originally make the decision, you know, to take baseball to the next level? You know, to come to the states. What was that process like? That recruiting process. Yeah. Um, how did you know you get your name over to the states? Yeah. Have people think of you? What was that process like, and how did you take those steps? Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, I knew that I wanted to come to the U.S., and then as I kind of got to like 14, 15 years old, I had to really start to think about how I was going to pursue like the major league dream. It was going to be college or pro. Um, the pro route kind of opens up at 16 years old when you're in Australia um, as an international free agent. I didn't really have much interest there. Um, I was kind of still developing into my body and my tools mm -hmm. and uh, college was going to be the best option and I had some great people in my corner, um, Trent Olchin and Ryan Roland Smith um, for the most part, but Glenn Williams and Baseball Australia as well um, that helped me kind of push towards the college route and I got to some tournaments in Arizona and just played my heart out trying to find the best school that could help me develop um, into a major league baseball player. And I was lucky enough to have Oregon State, which was a dream school of mine, um, see me play in Arizona. And I, I played well and had a great visit there, met the coaches and basically signed on the dots. And um, it was just the best decision I've made. And I'm really stoked to like where it's come now. Why did you choose Oregon State? What was different about that program? And I know you, you like to win. You want to be yeah. in a winning culture. And yeah. Oregon State had that. So yeah. um, what were some of the main factors that you chose to be a Beaver? Yeah. Yeah, my decision was really just solely focused on, focused on the baseball side of things and how I could grow and um, just be the best version of myself. So I was focused on the coaching staff. Could I, like express, play who, like who I am and from the get-go. Um, I felt like some some places like are very, very hesitant on playing freshmen and different ideas like that. And I just wanted a place where the best players are gonna play and the coaching staff's gonna be able to like build a relationship with me. And I felt like our staff, like, I connected with, I related. I could be myself from the get-go on the visit. And I was like, that feels perfect. And then I was getting recruited in 2019 and they won the national championship in 2018. And so that was like huge for me. It's like, I, I wanna be somewhere that's making Omaha runs consistently and, and pushing for national championships as the expectation. And it was just the perfect storm. Uh, so, yeah. When you officially left Australia to come to Oregon State, can you recall any thoughts, emotions, feelings 
making that jump to come to a yeah. new country? Yeah, I honestly didn't really know what it was going to be like. A lot of uncertainty, um, but I just remember like approaching it as if just focus on the things I can control. I'm going to have good people around me um, and it'll all like work itself out. I don't really have to worry. I just tried to focus on the controllable things like being as athletically and mentally prepared as I could to go out and perform kind of as soon as I got to the States. So I had summer ball lined up when I was coming over and um, lucky enough, I had a hot start and it really just rolled into getting comfortable in the US and having success on, on the field. So yeah, I think the biggest thought was just prepare the best you can and that's all you can do. And um, I'd already sort of built a foundation with the people I was gonna be around in the US and had some good mutual friends that are gonna be coaches and all of these things that helped make the process easier, but just trying to focus on the, the certain things I can control, not the uncertain worrying things. Coming to Oregon State, um, I mean, you've already accomplished so much just being a Beaver um, in your two years there. What were some goals that you came into that new chapter with um, yeah. that you either have already accomplished or want to still accomplish yeah. at Oregon State or even just in baseball mm -hmm. in general? Mm -hmm. I think when I committed to Oregon State, I set my goals pretty high pretty early. I, I wanted to be a freshman All-American when I got there and um, I wanted to win a national championship and yeah, I completed the, the freshman All-American thing and, and then kind of set some new goals for my sophomore year, but really the chase is like still on mm -hmm. for the national championship and that's like, that's, that's, the, that's the sole hearted reason why I came to Oregon State because I felt like I was going to get a good chance to do that. So I'm just trying to do everything in my power to um, help build the team and build relationships with the guys that are gonna last forever and, and we go out and win. But yeah, freshman year I wanted to be an All-American and um, I really wanted, like since I committed, I was told myself I really wanted to be a first rounder. Um, there's never been an Australian first rounder mm -hmm. and some people thought I wouldn't even play at Oregon State and thought it was a kind of crazy decision to go there out of high school right. in Australia. Um, so yeah, I, I really wanna, play to the standard I think I can play and hopefully be the first Australian first rounder and then just continue to go forward. You keep mentioning, you know, representing Australia, being one of the first Australians to do blank. How much pride do you take in being from Australia and setting those standards for kids that also want to play baseball that come from Australia? Um, how important is that to you? Yeah, it's everything. Mm -hmm. Like it's. You could say it's my why, yeah. is like making an impact on the next people in Australia, the next generation of kids, whether that be baseball players or not. Um, so I think I'm in a position where I can go out and do that. And I just want to instill belief in, in the next generation of kids, whatever they're doing, because um, it, was, it was interesting coming from Australia in baseball. It's like, there's a lot of people that didn't have belief in me and then there was just a, a couple few that like provided belief and instilled like the fact that I didn't have to set limits on myself and I could go out and pursue crazy goals and, and dreams and aspirations and so I like learn a lot from that and looking back I wish there was more of those people in my mm -hmm. life um, and so I kind of want to get to a point where I I can have a like wide wide impact and and see what I can do from there, but it's 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 amazing, like coming from Australia, and I just think that there's so much room to improve, and in in Australian baseball, and I'm yeah, just hoping to yeah. go out and see what I can do. I think that's what separates, honestly, like the good from the great. You have a why and a yeah. bigger purpose in why you're playing the sport, yeah. and you are impacting those kids yeah. that you know, are from Australia or even just in the States, hearing your story, mm -hmm. it's going to impact a lot of people, not just in a short period of time yeah. here right now, like for a long time. Did you focus more on those that were supportive of you in your journey? Or do you think the people maybe that had that doubt almost pushed you even further? 
to go and get it. Yeah. Because I think that it seems like you're just, the way you carry yourself at the games at Oregon State, the way you speak on, you know, why you play the game, I can tell that there's a lot of, like, you just want to go get it. Yeah. I, it's a really good question because I have all the, I have all the, like, gratitude to the people that, like, supported me and, and provided that belief, but, like, truthfully, at least back in Australia, for the most part, like, I was fueled on the doubt. Um, I don't know why, but it was, like, it's, like, free motivation. Mm -hmm. It's, like, every time you kind of hear those things and you hear people talking about what you can and can't do and, and how far you're going to go in this game, and there was a lot of it. Uh, it just, like, constantly fueled me. Um, I don't know. I love that. I love... I love the kind of negative energy from others. Um, and some people thrive off it, some people don't, but I sort of learned, I say 14, 15, that like using that and like being mad about the way someone views you to like just improve yourself and come back and show out, like it was a good way to make myself better. And I kind of just lived off that. Like I, I, I really took note and, and kept kept those doubting words and doubting people in the back of my mind and I just really wanted to show them that <clears throat> like mm -hmm. I'm not that you can I'm not who it. I am like it's just like there's there's more room to yeah. improve it's so. almost making a negative into a positive yeah you're t turning you know that's motivation and yep. allowing you to keep going with your path and like Prove yourself right. Yeah. Not prove others wrong. Prove yourself yeah. right, and you're continuing to do that. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you about your relationship with Jimmy Nottie. Yeah. Um, and I know there's a story there. Both from Sydney. Both come to the states. He was a big support system for yeah. you. Um, what's your relationship with Jimmy, and how has he been a support system to you? Yeah. It's funny. Jimmy tells this story better than me, but <laughs> I guess when we were like little league age. It was kind of the first time we were playing against each other. Um, we didn't really know each other. We both just kind of knew each other as like the mm -hmm. kind of good players on other teams. And I guess I hit a ball that like hit him in the forehead or something. <laughs> I don't know if that's the exact story, but I think I hit a ball and it hit him in the head. Mm -hmm. um, and we like, I guess, didn't really like each other at that point. We were super young. Um, as we got older, played on teams together and played against each other a bunch and lived close enough to each other I think we just grew extremely tight because we <clears throat> realized how much we had in common and um, it's just always like a good laugh around him. So we, great humor and just so much commonalities that we grew closer and closer as time went on and our goals were set out with each other from 14, 15 years old. We, he wanted to go to Stanford, I wanted to go to Oregon State. Um, Somehow that all came to fruition <laughs> really fast on the same trip. We were roommates in Arizona when we were getting recruited. Um, and yeah, he's just been a, an unbelievable friend to me. And having someone that's kind of going through the same path as you, hearing the same doubt, playing in the same leagues, uh, it's like the perfect support system to kind of thrive with each other. Uh, and he's been so great to me and we're both playing in the Pac-12 now and hopefully he goes out and has a great year and I go out and have a great year and uh, we both really have the same ideas, the same aspirations and yeah, it's it's pretty awesome relationship. I think it's so important to have people like that in your life, like that you're both going for really high goals and really um, ambitious lifestyle. Yeah. and. To have someone like that um, in your corner, I think, really just is, helps. And also, like like you said, you both can relate on a lot of different things. Yeah. So I think that's definitely a unique yeah. um, friendship right there. Yeah. So we're here on Cape Cod. Yeah. You're playing for Falmouth. We're here at the Cape Cod Baseball League where the stars of tomorrow shine tonight. Was this a milestone you pictured for yourself? Was this somewhere you wanted to come yeah. and reach this point? Yeah. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, as soon as I decided I was going to Oregon State, I, I should have mentioned it in the question earlier, but I decided I was going to Oregon State, and I was like, 
I want to be a freshman All-American, I want to be a first rounder, and part of that was like, I'm going to play my freshman year and go to the Cape. Um, that kind of changed when things got closer. I didn't come to the Cape after my freshman year, but it was a goal of mine. I'd seen so many quality players and heard so much about the Cape Cod League that it was a goal of mine and I really thought it was going to be um, something I wanted to do and I didn't go after my freshman year but now I'm here and I'm like extremely grateful that I got to do this. Uh, just like the quality of competition, this <laughs> and the coaches and players I've been around, I've just built so many good relationships and um, it's going to be a summer I remember forever. Um, I think that you've definitely capitalized on all your opportunities here um, and we'll get all into all those accolades in a second but I've seen the articles how your coaches describe you your teammates describe you as a workhorse um, you're truly a sponge everywhere you go I notice that you're asking questions you're asking questions on your mechanics you're hitting and you were invited to the Cape League and you chose to go 10 weeks to train yeah and I think that's paid off I mean mm -hmm. can you talk to me a little bit about that experience learning breaking down the mechanics um, and your experience that summer leading into this summer because I think that that time paid off yeah it was interesting I like I knew I was gonna get the chance to come to the Cape but it just wasn't the best option for me last summer uh, I had a good freshman year, but it wasn't as good as I would have liked. Um, I felt like I rode some ups and downs and um, got to a place where I wasn't really damaging the ball as much as I would have liked. And I thought I needed time to kind of step away from the field a little bit and hone in some mechanics, um, get my body to a like new level of strength and, and size, and just learn more. Um, I think that sometimes players can get caught up in like being super skill focused and in game focused versus like stepping away and like seeing their tools as a whole and trying to push their ceiling. Um, scouts always talk about like ceiling and floor and kind of where you fit in and I felt like I was playing close to my ceiling freshman year um, but I needed to unlock sort of greater potential and just playing games like you hone that skill and you learn more about trying to be consistent on the field but I needed to kind of unlock some new things and learn some more things about my swing to really get the most out of myself in this future that's like now here um, so it was it was super beneficial for me to go learn from some of the best of the best um, coaches and resources in the country and yeah, just, just train hard for 10 weeks with, with an intense focus on what I needed to work on versus just playing. Because yeah. sometimes when you're playing all the time, it's, it's really focused on, you're really competitive. And so you're just playing like old habit, like it's all reaction. And so it's tough to make growth or make change, swing changes, all of the rest when you're just playing because you're going to go back to old habit. So yeah, I needed that time and I got a lot out of it and I'm, Happy I did it now and happy I'm in the Cape now, so. I can tell a lot of those mechanics, I mean, with anyone's game, it's super important, but even just hearing your dialogue in the dugout or at batting practice, how much you really break down each pitch, your swing, your hips, yeah. your legs, like that is very like n the nitty gritty of mm -hmm. the game. Mm -hmm. um, have you always like tried to understand that part of the game and study that part of the game or did you have a moment where you wanted to take it to that next level and understand all of those mechanics that come with playing baseball? Yeah, I think for as long as I can remember, at least till like 10 years old, little league age, I always wanted to find out more about hitting and, mm -hmm. and really dive into the swing things. Um, I, I remember getting home from school 10, 11 years old and watching hours of YouTube videos um, of like yeah. hitting instructors um, and watching hours of major league highlights like Bryce Harper 30 home run season and just like breaking down side on angle swings from as long as I can remember 10 little league age so there was that and it's just I think it just comes with the obsession I like 
I want to know as much as I can and have as much of an edge on this game as I as I possibly can. So I spend spend the time researching and and watching film and um, talking, having those conversations as much as I can. So yeah, the the quality of players and the quality of coaches around me here, it's just like it's like a library of information. And um, the more I can bounce ideas and talk, hitting, the more I can just learn and and grow. Uh, so. I'm obsessed with it and the people around me help me like let out that obsession. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, you really are a sponge when it comes to this game and it seems as though any opportunity that comes your way, like you make the most of it um, and it seems like a theme for you. Coming to the States, setting school records at Oregon State, freshman All-American, this year's second team All-American, Pac-12 first team, Pac-12 defensive team. You're only two years into Oregon State, by the way. And here at the Cape, you hit for the cycle. We've had five for five games, making history for the Commodores, and also doing things that haven't even been done in the MLB yet. You're the starting All-Star game. You lead the Commodores in multiple categories. Are you able to conceptualize all of this? Like, how much of an impact you're leaving everywhere you go? Or is, do you ever have like some disbelief with it? Like it's pretty incredible. Everyone knows Travis Pazana and how, how crazy of a player he is. Um, are you able to conceptualize the greatness you're leaving or was this always our part of the plan, do you think? Uh, I don't know, hearing it all like that, it, like being in this environment and thinking about it, it's. It's pretty crazy, um, and if you if you showed the 15, 16 year old me like what where I am now, it'd be like ecstatic. Like I'd be in euphoria, no doubt. Um, but I think it's just been part of the process and part of like consistently putting in the time and consistently like setting these goals for myself and trying to be great. And every time I step on the field, like I want to be the best player on the field and, and leave an impact and be an entertainer for the people in the crowd. So it's, it's hard to kind of comprehend those accolades and what they really like mean and the impact they leave, if they leave any. Um, but I think it's just part of the process of continuing to be great. and it, it allows me to like reassure myself that the process I'm taking and the way I'm going about it is working and I'm constantly growing and getting better and um, I hope to just continue that. And if I continue the process and can you continue to like be the best version of myself, I, they'll, the accolades will come and, and they'll help me make an impact on people. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that you, just the way you carry yourself at the games, even pre-game, during the game, and post-game, signing a bunch of kids' baseballs, interacting with fans. Um, <clears throat> you're very engaged in those conversations, and I think that that's what also people are going to remember, your character. Um, and you're just all around a great player um, when it comes to your character, who you choose to be on the field. And I noticed, too, like, in the dugout that your teammates come to you for advice and listen to you. You have those leadership qualities. Do so you think that you've always had that kind of voice in the dugout, in the locker room? Um, or did you kind of develop that over time? Um, I think it's always been kind of an innate, innate part of me. Mm -hmm. um, in Little League, as, like, as long as I can remember back in baseball where I was playing with like a team that was trying to win, um, I had a nickname in Little League and it was Coach Trav. Like <laughs> my teammates called me Coach Trav and um, it was kind of sometimes good, sometimes bad. Sometimes I'd speak too much. Sometimes I'd give some good advice, but I think that was just the way I always went about it and I always wanted to be a leader and I'm trying to help the people around me. Um, partly because I want to win and partly just because I like seeing like my friends succeed and the, like, everyone be happy and have a good time playing the game so it was always innate but sometimes it comes off wrong like sometimes sometimes coaches like felt like I was talking too much and I was showing people up and like that's not your place to speak and 
I think some advice from a young age was like just continue to play the game like you do and continue to be yourself. Um, I'm lucky people told me that because a lot of the time when you're talking so much and trying to lead and being really active in that role, uh, people try to shut it down. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just kept playing the game how I play it and, and really talking and being a leader, but it's definitely grown over time. I think I'm learning when's the right time to say something, when's the right time not to, who, who's trying to hear it when, um, right. and which teammates sort of um, are looking for that advice or, or have the mental capacity to take it in and use it in the game versus like it would kind of make them spin for and sure. think. So it's a process and um, sometimes it's, it's not the best thing that I'm very like talkative and giving advice all the time and just talking baseball. Um, but I think it's a really good quality and um, I'm just learning how to hone it and use it. And I, I love helping people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like finding that happy medium yeah. where um, you can give your teammates some pointers here and there, um, but still, you know, doing your own thing, making sure it's like the right time, place, things like that. Yeah. Um, now, with all of these crazy accolades that you've achieved, there had to have been, or possibly there may not have been, but were there any hard times, adversity that you had to push through that was a learning experience for you that um, has brought you to where you are today? Um, well, way back, like in high school, <clears throat> I think one, one of the biggest kind of adversity, like tough moments was I really wanted to play for Team Australia um, in the 15U World Cup. And I didn't make the 50 man, uh, the 40 man like tryout squad. And I was a little bit younger, but I thought I was kind of up to it, and um, there was maybe 10 or 11 guys in my mm -hmm. state that were training to be a part of that squad, um, kind of trying out, but in a little academy, and um, I think I might have been the only guy that was like training for that and trying out for it that didn't make the national tryout from my state. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a bit of a heartbreaker, but it was right around that age where I it like helped me mature and helped me use it as motivation. And one of those first events where I was like, all right, like it's adversity, but it's fine. It's just part of the process. It's just a bump in the road. Mm -hmm. And then since I've been in the US, I think just the feeling, the, the, the gutted feeling of the season ending both yeah. years. So like freshman year in the Super Regional in Auburn, it was tough. Um, I think we lost by one run in the game three of the Super Regional to go to Omaha, um, so it was this close, and I felt like I I had a tough game. I yeah, it's game three of the Super Regional, the biggest game of my career so far in my life, and some things went the way that I wouldn't have liked them to go, and um, kind of brought me down, brought me down in the dumps for just a small period of time. Um, but it was tough, and. I was lucky that like the people at Oregon State and the coaches and the players, like it's such a family that everyone was able to just hold each other up. And that team was so strong. We were ranked number three in the country um, pretty much the whole year. We won a whole lot of games, a whole lot of first, uh, first day draft picks. So to see guys like career at Oregon State end in that game three of the Super Regional, um, and feel like you had a part in like not helping the team win that day. That was that was really tough. Um, and it it I thought about it a lot, and I just wanted to grow on the things I could grow on, and and build the team for the next year that we'd have more success. Um, so sophomore year we came up against LSU in the regional. Um, we lost a lot of guys to injury and and the draft the year before, and it was it was a tough one. So we lost again and terrible feeling again, but um, yeah, the adversity of just seeing the season end and seeing guys playing their last college games, it's like mm -hmm. finishing on a low note, like not only one team wins their last game kind of thing. Right. Um, and so seeing guys have their kind of career end and you played a part in it, win or loss, like it's really tough. And so just wanting to never have that feeling right. again, 
um, is really fueling me this year. And I think there's a collective environment that's using that adversity in those, those moments to take Oregon State back to the top this year. Yeah, I think that describing that family atmosphere, I think that's what can lift you guys up. And the wins and losses are a part of the journey. And I think that feeling that sting yeah. is just going to push you guys even further. And, yeah. you know, knowing the potential that your team can go to mm -hmm. um, can also be a driving force. And I know that you're finishing up the Cape League here, but what is, you know, something that the overall message of those wins and losses that you're taking away and that you're using as fuel to go into the 2024 season? Yeah. Uh, just processing and being self-aware of the things that lead to the losses and being self-aware of what you can do to be better. Um, sometimes we just go out there and go through the motions and just trying to bring as many guys in the family along with the idea that there's a lot to improve on in everyone's game and we're going to be accountable for each other and just always push to be better. Um, so there's that and then just spending the time to understand what winning teams do. Read about winning teams, watch video of winning teams um, and, and what a championship players look like. And the more we can kind of manifest that and bring that to our identity, uh, I think that's going to be huge. And, I'm loving it here, but I also can't wait to get back and, and really see new faces and just bring together the family to pursue something great this season. For sure. And I think that even like this, a lot of our conversation today is you studying the game and you studying yeah. how the game works. And I think that you mentioning that will definitely lead to positive things for your season. And I'm excited to watch it. So I think I know the answer to this question, um, but what is your end goal with baseball? It might change from when we're sitting here right now, but sitting here on the Cape right now, 2023, what is your end goal with baseball or where do you want to take your game? I think right now I, I want to be a World Series champ and I want to be a Hall of Famer, a Major League Baseball Hall of Famer. Um, again, it's, it's pretty like, lengthy aspirations and um, I don't know that's just the way I always set things like I I really love aiming high and I think that if I just continue continue to control my growth and my process like whether I end up a Hall of Fame or end up a World Series champ or not like I'm going to learn so much about myself and 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 grow in all aspects of life just pursuing something great um, that like I'll be okay if I pull up short of those goals. So I'm, yeah, they're big ones, but I think if I was able to have a lengthy career and have a lot of success and win a World Series, I think that the impact that could have in Australia to then me having a voice to the next generation of Australian kids and, and being kind of a, a mentor or icon figure in Australian sports, um, it's something I, I want to do and I, I really want to bring baseball to the map in Australia and I think that having a lengthy career winning and hopefully ending up like somewhere in the Hall of Fame is is like yeah it would mm -hmm. it would fulfill my why and a lot of people call you the most interesting man in college baseball your coach at Oregon State calls you one of the best people in college baseball your teammates call you one of the most passionate and intelligent player in college baseball. What do you hope your legacy is? That's what they say. Mm. But what do you hope you leave at every place that you step to? What do you hope your legacy is? Uh, just a passion and care for the game and, and the people around me. I hope that I'm, I hope that I'm remembered as just someone who was passionate and wanted the people around him to be better and that I have care and empathy and um, yeah, someone that's ad adventurous and will go out and take some risks and fail but, but stand back up and um, I think just someone that was obsessed and 
pursued something that not many people thought was possible and I just want to show people like there's there's more in the tank and you can kind of fulfill those crazy dreams that people shut down from a young age um, so I think that's what I want to be remembered for is just providing belief and just being a caring and passionate person. I think you're definitely working towards that legacy and already have checked off a lot of those boxes. Yeah. Um, your impact on the game of baseball already is huge and it's going to continue to grow your home country in Australia, in the US, at Oregon State, here at the Cape. Your impact has already been huge and it's going to continue to grow. Um, kids who have dreams like yours are going to look up to you and look up to you now and are going to, you are their fuel and you're their, where you are now is their goals and like you're going to continue to be that role model. Um, in Australia, here at the Cape, all the kids that come up to you after the games, yeah. um, the passion you have for the game, the way you carry yourself at the games, with the umpires, with the scouts, with your coaches. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's going to lead to you to be great. Yeah. And I'm really excited to watch where you go the last few games here cool. at the Cape. Um, and everyone here, the, myself and everyone at the Commodores, are rooting for you every step of the way. And I really truly think that um, you're going to, you are destined to be great um, with everything that you've accomplished, the way you view the game, and um, what you picture for yourself and for everyone around you. Um, so Travis, thank you so much for sitting here and chatting with me. Um, and I'm really excited to see where you go, yeah. where this all leads. Thanks for the kind words. That was, that was awesome. It's, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you so much. I really appreciate it.